Hello all, welcome back to Homeschooling with Classic Stories. I'm Laura and today I'm going to be showing you about what we do for puzzles. So in the schedule video I mentioned that this is kind of one of the first things that we do for the day. So the first thing that we do for the day besides the normal getting ready brushing teeth stuff is um, we go outside and my son rides his bike um, to take my um, two and a half year old to daycare and then comes back um, and usually there's a stop at a playground on the way back. So immediately when he gets home, so this is sort of when our, our homeschooling day first starts, that's when he go, comes in and chooses a puzzle. So the very first thing on our list is always puzzle, um, regardless of the day. So I wanted to show you some of the puzzles that we use. So we kind of have two styles of puzzles at our house. I think most people sort of do. Um, we have this style of puzzle, um, and it's just sort of the cardboard style. I'll take one out for you. It's got the board on the bottom and then it's just got pieces to it as well. Um, and these are all uniform pieces, meaning that they're all of similar size and shape. So for this style of puzzle, he has to really fo focus on matching the colors because even if he uses, even if he uses the, I'm sorry, even if he uses the spacers here, um, he really can't. Um, he really can't tell that the where the puzzle pieces are meant to go because they're all relatively the same size and shape. So inside of these gigantic Ziploc bags, um, we keep two of these puzzles, and the reason for this is because you know I think we all know that when puzzles are taken out and taken off shelves. They tend to flip over and yeah, flipped over puzzles are no fun for anyone. So when it's kept in a bag like this, then if it flips over, well, then I'm just sorting through the pieces of two puzzles, not 10 puzzles. So I do keep them in groups of two. So when he picks one of these packages, um, one of these packages is meant to be sort of two puzzles for him to do. And we have several of these. I just wanted to show you some of them that we have. Um, they're all just from like the dollar store, essentially. Um, they're all very cheap puzzles. If they were to get damaged or some pieces were to get lost, I'll be honest with you, I, I wouldn't be that sad about it. Um, and they are of different sizes and shapes. I tried to group them into sizes and shapes. I'm not sure if you can tell this, but in this one, the pieces are rather large, but in the one that's it's grouped with, um, the second one, the pieces are um, kind of a, like a norm, more normal size puzzle piece. So I do try and group kind of harder ones and easier ones together so that he's roughly taking the same amount of time. It doesn't really matter what day it is. The other thing about these puzzles is he tends to do these ones um, in his bedroom. Like he'll just sit on his bed and do these puzzles which I'll admit is kind of nice. Part of the reason we do puzzles first thing is learning elements, but also it's sort of that we first come home and I need to finish drinking my coffee or doing the dishes or preparing for the day or whatever it is. So he can do these by himself. And if he chooses one of these puzzles, then he's staying in his room to do so, which is really um, a benefit. Then I wanted to show you the next style of puzzle that we have in our house. Um, we kind of have, I kind of have them grouped. So in groups, um, these are the largest puzzles that we have. These are 100 piece puzzles. You see, you see that they're ages six and above. My son is four and a half. Um, I'm not gonna say that these are too hard for him, but this is for, maybe I'm drinking my coffee and sitting on the couch while he does this on the floor um, because he does require a bit of assistance. Um, it's like verbal assistance. So like I have to tell him the steps of it. So make sure that you sort out the side pieces from the inside pieces first and then, you know, make sure you find all the red pieces and the green pieces and like have him group them before he starts. Um, so he does take crossing on these harder puzzles. He cannot do them by himself. We have two of these. We only have two of these, thankfully. Um, the other 100 piece puzzle is very similar in the sense that it's a group of people 
This one, I actually physically have to group for him because there's no color prompting. So I just sort of look at it and then um, I will do a lot of the grouping and then he goes through to help with the, the grouping element itself. The next set of puzzles we have is very manageable for him. So I wanted to show you these. This is kind of the start of the floor puzzles that are really more his level. Um, it's this one. You'll see that it's for ages four and above. This is totally perfect for him. There's 60 piece puzzles. Um, we have quite a few of these 60 piece puzzles. So we have like a dolphin one and there's a nice train one and this box one, which he really likes. The only thing that I'll say about these is you'll notice at my house we have a preference for Ravensburger puzzles. And I just wanted to open one up and show you why that is. Um, so this is a piece from the train puzzle. But you'll notice that the thickness of the pieces is really nice. And the back is, they're just sturdier. I don't really know how to describe this material, but it does feel like a little bit different from how normal puzzle pieces feel. So I have this puzzle piece out, and then we also have this one that my son actually really loves because it has all the bugs on it. But I'll show you that the pieces look a little bit different. So these pieces, in comparison, um, aren't quite as thick, and they just they don't feel quite as sturdy. They don't feel like the image is attached quite as well. Um, I know a lot of people really like Melissa and Doug, so this is probably some sort of heresy, but. Um, I don't know if you can tell from the back, but the, I guess the fabric backing is a little different. And on this Melissa and Doug piece, you'll notice these ridges. Um, they have bends to them. I don't really know how to describe this, but when we buy, when we buy puzzles, um, we do prefer to get the Ravensburger puzzles, even though they are a little bit more expensive. My Sutton has yet to break a piece like, like, this is very hard to, to, to bend and break. So um, I think that's really nice. So this is sort of the one that we prefer to, to get. Oh, I just put that in the wrong box. Oh no. Um, so anyway, for these pieces, grab that. All right, for these pieces, um, he does these entirely by himself. He takes it off the shelf. He um, puts them all together. He sorts through the pieces himself. Um, and then at the end, he cleans it out by himself. Um, again, as I mentioned in the scheduling video, that is the product of us doing puzzles with him throughout his preschool year. And so he's very used to the system of it. If you're just starting out with your child doing puzzles, you'll probably have to sit with them and explain side pieces and, you know, building the outer rim to it and maybe like grouping by colors and that sort of thing. Floor puzzles are actually um, kind of a, a challenging critical thinking skill. Um, I guess we don't really think about it very much, but it is something that you will have to sit down and really give some prompting to if you haven't before. The last style of puzzle we have um, is actually sort of the first style of puzzle that we started with. Oh, very heavy. Okay, it's this style of puzzle. These are Melissa and Doug, and they're 48 pieces. Um, I don't know that there's an age on these. Oh, it says ages three and up in tiny print. Um, these were the first puzzles besides the like cardboard style puzzles. These were the first floor puzzles that he did. And you see on them that it says that they are three feet by two feet. They are. They are very large. So um, my son does still really like these puzzles, even though he's put them together multiple times. Um, the pieces are huge, like the hand compared to the size of the piece. Um, these pieces are really, really large. And the truth is, is he can do this entirely by himself. Uh, he can do the bigger puzzles by himself, but this is fast. Um, and so usually I'll encourage him to grab one of these puzzles if we have somewhere to go. So like if we have an appointment um, and we're going to be skipping the sort of other morning activities, or if I just kind of need to kill a little bit of time while I get us ready to go somewhere, then I usually I ask him to pull out one of these um, because he can do these so quickly. So, uh, well, he can do these more quickly than the other puzzles. So this is a really great thing to have for sort of time filling once your child is good at puzzles, but also they were really good for, 
for teaching him how to do puzzles. Uh, so that was a nice thing to have uh, even when he was younger. But the 60 piece puzzles are much more of his speed at this point. I do wish there was something in between 60 piece puzzles and 100 piece puzzles. I'm sure there is. I'm sure I could find an 80 piece puzzle somewhere. But um, most commonly it does seem to be 60 piece and then the big jump to 100. And I feel like he's sort of somewhere in, in between those two. But anyway, those are the puzzles that we have. We do have a lot more puzzles than these, but um, these are sort of representative of, of where our puzzles are. For doing puzzles, <clears throat> the only thing that I would recommend that you do to get started if you don't have any puzzles in your house is I do really recommend you start with just the simple Dollar Tree store ones that you saw in the bag um, because they are so cheap. You may find that your kid hates puzzles or that you hate puzzles or that puzzles just aren't right for your family um, and it's better to find that out with one of the dollar store puzzles rather than something like this that can be quite expensive. These are great by the way for like asking for for like birthdays and Christmas from grandparents if you have that ability in your life that can be a really nice thing to do because they are rather pricey. Anyway I hope this helps in talking about puzzles the first real thing that we do for homeschooling every day. So I will see you in our next video.